Hi everyone and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and I post two videos a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday at 7am. So if you enjoy recipe videos like this one and you want to see more then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And now I'm going to show you how to make my delicious, slightly spicy quinoa risotto with cannellini beans. As I just mentioned today I'm going to be making my delicious slightly spicy quinoa risotto with cannellini beans. So we're having a vegetarian slash vegan dinner this evening and during the week we like to eat vegan or vegetarian so I'm always looking for new recipes and this one I thought of just simply by standing at the cupboard and looking in. Um, I was looking to see what we did and didn't have and I thought the quinoa and the beans would go really well together as a risotto and I had some spices as well so I threw those in and I made myself well I made us a delicious dinner so I thought we'd have it again this evening and while I was making it I thought I'd share the recipe with you so here is how to make my delicious slightly spicy quinoa risotto with cannellini beans first thing I've done is I've put a large pan onto I'm going to put this onto a high heat on my hob and I'm going to add a bit of oil to the base of the pan like so and then I'm just going to tilt the pan to spread the oil around and then I'm going to leave this pan to heat up now my pan is nice and hot and I have chopped some spring onions here that I'm just going to add to the base of the pan and I'm going to fry these spring onions so I've got a bunch of spring onions and I just top, took the tops and the tails off and, uh, and then I just cut them into about half centimetre pieces and I am just going to fry these until these start to soften now. So my pan is actually getting slightly too hot so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit and if things start to stick to the bottom then all you have to do is just add a little bit of water to the base of the pan and that should hopefully help things not to stick as much. So yes, yeah, I'm just going to continue frying these now. I think these have actually started to soften. Spring onions take a little less time than an onion or a red onion simply because they are just a softer um, vegetable basically. So this took about three minutes to fry and I'm now going to add some courgette to this. So I have peeled and grated one courgette and I'm just going to add that to the base. And the recipe did call in the original recipe it did call for a red pepper, but I think I ate the red pepper over the weekend in something else. So unfortunately there's no red pepper today. So I'm just, but I would add the red pepper in at the same time as the courgettes and it will explain that in the recipe. So I'll put it in the description box below. So now I'm just going to fry these until they heat through a little bit. So my courgettes have heated through nicely now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my sumac to this and sumac is a slightly spicy spice, it's quite tomato, it's got a very tomato-y flavour to it so it really brings out the tomato in this, when I add it it will bring out the tomato in this and then I've also got some ginger as well so I've just got a teaspoon of brown ginger that I'm going to put in and I'm also going to put in oh, a teaspoon of ground turmeric as well or turmeric is it yeah I always get that wrong oh, silly mummy and then I also got a teaspoon of garlic granules to go into this as well and I'm just going to mix this up with the vegetables and that smells really nice already, I can smell that. Mmm, that's delicious. Right, and now I'm going to add in my quinoa. So I have rinsed through my quinoa twice under the tap 
Um, and that's just to get, because I'm putting it in a risotto, I won't be rinsing it out at the end, so that's just to get rid of all the, um, the uh, starch from it, basically. And I'm just going to pop that into my saucepan, like so. And I'm going to fry this now, like you would with risotto rice, basically. It won't go see-through, but it'll just heat it through a little bit. And then I'm going to add in my tomatoes to this as well. So I have two tins of tomatoes that I'm going to add in. Um, and the second tins here. So I'm just going to add these in. And I'm also going to add in some vegetable stock as well. So I'm just going to pour this into the bottom of the tins and I'm going to swirl them around and then I'm just going to pour that out like so. And I think I said in the recipe about 250 mils, but you may need a little bit more or you might need a little bit less. So I do 200 mils to begin with. Let me just check. Yep, I think that's about 200 mils in there. I'm just going to do that. Some of the quinoa is at the top of that, but to measure, so you want to cover the quinoa in the chicken stock and the tomatoes, and then you want about two centimeters on top. So where it sits at the bottom, oh, it's a bit over. So actually you may need a little bit less, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to the boil now. Yeah, and then I'm going to turn it down and leave it to simmer. So basically, two centimetres is about that much there. So what you ideally want is the um, liquid to hit that bar there when you put the spoon in and it hits the top of the ingredients. Obviously with this it's a little bit different because, unfortunately, um, the quinoa does float to the top with this dish. So I'm just going to bring it to the boil as it's, it's coming now and then I'm just going to turn it down slightly and I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm going to leave that to simmer away until all the liquid is gone and you have just the cooked quinoa and everything else in there as well. And as always I have forgotten to add salt and pepper so I'm just going to add a little bit of salt to this and then a little bit of pepper as well so not too much. And then I'm just going to stir that in and I'm definitely going to leave this to simmer away now. The quinoa has finished cooking now. Um, I can see to the bottom of the pan when I move it away so I know that all the liquid has gone. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some beans that I cooked off earlier. So I had some dried beans in the cupboard that I soaked overnight. And to make them softer, I've actually learned recently that if you soak them in bicarbonate of soda, it makes the skins on them softer. So I soaked them overnight, then I poured the liquid away from that bowl and I rinsed them. And then I put them into a saucepan about the same size as this one. And I... Uh, boiled them and then let them simmer with baking powder on again and they actually cook quicker as well if you do it that way there is a scientific reason as to why but I can't remember right now so I've done about 200 grams of dried beans but if you wanted to use tins then I would suggest two 400 gram tins of beans you could use and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the risotto and I'm just going to mix everything in and I'm going to turn the heat off but I'm just going to leave this to heat up so I'm just stirring this all round now like so and I'm just going to leave that to heat up I'm going to go and get some kale so I've halved the ingredients and then I've added enough for my son so this is actually only half of the ingredients so I'm only adding about a handful or so of kale to this and then I'm just going to mix it in like so and let it wilt down and that is our dinner done 
if you wanted to make this vegetarian this is a vegan meal at the moment so if you wanted to make this vegetarian you could add cheese to this if you wanted to and cream cheese works really nicely as well if your kids aren't so keen on spicy food then cream cheese is a great way to cool this meal down so that's dinner all done. That's how you make my delicious, slightly spicy quinoa risotto with cannellini beans. And that recipe, I will link in the description box below for you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm off to have this for my dinner now. It smells so good, I just can't wait to eat it. So for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to leave any comments below. And please, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon. Bye.